It might have taken 13 games, but we're finally going to get a chance to see someone start under center for the Jets in his 20s over the final three games this season. Fortunately, it came at the expense of seeing a great leader like Josh McCown go down with a season-ending injury, as the Jets once again prove that they just don't have enough talent yet for fans to get emotionally involved. We'll discuss the sour loss and Bryce Petty's chance to prove whether he could start in this league, as Jets Uncovered on the Lads Football Radio Network starts now. All right, it's two, It's uh, Monday, December 11th, uh, 2017. I'm Greg DePama. Welcome to another edition of Jets Uncovered on the Arlads Football Radio Network at Arlads.com. Well, not exactly the way I'd hope we'd see Petty get his shot and, and uh, way too deep into the season as well and having to go up against some really good teams over the next three weeks. But uh, too bad. Price, now is your chance, and you better take advantage of it because you might not get another one. Joining me from rotowire.com uh, is sports writer Jan Levine. Jan, tough to see a really good guy like McCown deal with uh, this sort of injury to end his season. But the silver lining for Jets fans, of course, is that we get to see possibly both Petty and Hackenberg and find out whether either one of them have uh, any talent to stick around with this rebuilding club. Yeah, I mean, again, it, you can tell how emotional um, he was. I mean, and you can understand to a certain extent McCown's emotion because um, obviously he doesn't know if he'll be back. He's got a one-year DL. He was named as the quarterback for the remainder of the season where a decent finish, although he would not have been helped by the performance uh, this past Sunday, but a decent finish would have probably sealed his fate as coming back as a minimum as a backup. Now he goes into an off season or end of season, at least to start with, where it's, it's questionable as to what his future role is going to be on his team and if he has a future role on the team. Though I think we've def- you know we've talked a lot about that he should be brought back. He'd be a good backup. He'd be a good mentor, especially if they bring in a quarterback uh, to be the future quarterback, depending on the direction in which they go. Uh, you and I both wanted to see Petty in a minimum, Hackenberg less so. Uh, we're clearly going to get Petty. Hackenberg, I'm still not quite sure if he's going to play unless there's an injury to to Petty, given kind of the comments that were said after the game in terms of who the starting quarterback and how quickly Todd Bowles and others kind of talked about it being uh, Bryce Petty. But yesterday was clearly the demarcation point of we can now end all the tomfoolery that a lot of us had and hoped for that the Jets could be independent contention because it was a ugly game on every single side of the ball yesterday. And now it's looking forward to the future and seeing what they have in the future um, in terms of is Bryce Petty a guy that could remain with the team? Is he a second or maybe even a third quarterback? If Kirsten Hackenberg gets in, what happens to Hackenberg? Does he prove at all that he, um, he can be a quarterback in the NFL, even at a backup level, if he doesn't play well? What does this mean for Mike McCagden? Because it'll show that his, at least his talent evaluation skills, in terms of when he took McCag- took Hackenberg, I'm sorry, in the second round, was a clear waste of a draft pick and something that could set the Jets back for a little bit of time unless they make up for it in the next draft. Yeah, well, I, and of course, the, the other thing is everybody's talking about is uh, Todd Bowles and, and, and what about his job security? And uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't understand. I don't know what it is that they're seeing that that I'm not seeing and that maybe even you agree. You know, we've talked about bowls. Uh, we, we, look, we said in the very beginning of the season, the first few games, it was it seemed like he was making a lot of the same mistakes. And uh, especially after the first couple of games and the Raider loss, it was like, all right, this is over. He's making the same mistakes. They're getting killed. You know, Mac- McCown's still the quarterback. This is just annoying. Uh, it's going to be a long season and, and, and the bowls watches on. And then all of a sudden, every week, uh, even win or lose, uh, Todd Bowles, I'm sorry, just wasn't making dumb decisions. He wasn't doing anything that stuck out in a negative way. And sure, people like, you know, they want to comment about things that happened yesterday. Oh, the same old nonsense about why aren't you calling timeout at the end of the first half? And why aren't you throwing ball, throwing the ball with three minutes left in the game or four minutes left in the game with, you know, trying to win the game down to 20 points, whatever, uh, I, 23 points. I mean, come on. I, I mean, 
we have to really always talk about this again. Oh, and then what happens? The Jets call timeout at the end of the first half. They get the ball back. They throw an interception for a touchdown. And then what are the fans going to say? How could you do that? Why don't you just take it where it was? Go to the locker room. I mean, it's just so silly stuff. So the, that's the only thing that they can do to try to rip to, to rip the coaching decisions of Todd Bowles. I think I think he has a lot going for him. I think we both agree to that. Uh, it would really take an awful lot over the next three weeks for me to change my mind. Not that I would sit here and and, and be some sort of uh, you know uh, advocate. Uh, f- well, I'm not an advocate for change. That's definitely it. But I would also not be sitting here. Uh, and being a, a very upset Jet fan if Todd Bowles was let go. I just think that from what I've seen, there's no doubt in my mind that the way the players are playing, it's a new team, it's a rebuild, it's it, they're changing the culture in the locker room. Everything that I've seen as far as that is concerned is going very well. It, it would make no sense to me, actually, that they would let him go, and I don't think they're going to let him go. Well, I think if you're going to take the counter argument, I don't think it's too difficult to actually to take the counter argument. First, this is a six loss in eight games for the team. Um, a couple of those games, the game against Tampa and today and yesterday's games were games that Jets should have won or potentially obviously been a lot more competitive in. Uh, coming out flat yesterday again, came out flat last week. Fortunately, they, they rebounded, um, but they came out flat again, fell behind early. And I don't think it's a situation where they overlooked the Broncos, but this is a results business. And the fact that they went into a game where a lot of us felt they should win that game, but also felt that it could be, I wouldn't call it a trap game, but one of those games that, you know, quote unquote, same old Jets that they end up losing. This is kind of what happened yesterday. A situation where you go on the road, you make a backup quarterback look like a stud quarterback against your defense. Your offense is mired in, in muck and mire all game long. It did absolutely nothing defensively. You let them march up and down the field. And while I don't think it came down to, individual coaching decisions costing them. I do think as a whole, the team wasn't prepared. You know, jo- you know, Jamal Adams has talked about the team practicing better at times and needing to be more intense with their practices. And while I don't necessarily think that was the case yesterday, them losing a game where you would think they should win and a game where at a minimum they should be a heck of a lot more competitive is really disconcerting because it's three weeks in a row where something similar has happened. And that's what troubles me. Now, I'm not, I, don't, I don't think he should be gone, but losing 6 of 8 and losing in the manner in which they did yesterday clearly doesn't help the argument to keep Bowles another season at a minimum. Well, look, I, I look at this uh, situation as a se- look, and that's why the last three games are going to matter. I look at it as a season-long evaluation of the head coach, not uh, how they do in the first half, how they do in the second half, how they do last week, and so forth and so on. And again, barring any sort of 40 to nothing games to end the season where it looks like guys are quitting and are confused and are just completely giving up on him. Uh, look, they, they, they're, let's just make sure that we, 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 we keep in perspective what's going to happen here. The Jets are not going to win another game. They shouldn't. I mean, if they win another not, game. Not against, not against the Charger team that's going for the playoffs and not against the Patriot team that's going for home field advantage. Yeah, well, the Saints the are better than the Chargers. Team, and the Saints team that's playing for the playoffs also. Yeah, so, Saints, yeah. Saints are better uh, than the Chargers. I, I, it, so, it could get ugly. Yeah, so so let's not get into that. But what you don't want to see uh, is games like yesterday, the next three weeks, where they just look completely awful. Uh, players then are also commenting things aren't going well, whatever. There's so, then all of a sudden, maybe you start to see some panic in the locker room when it looked like the locker room was going to stick together. Now, all of a sudden, the locker room is not sticking together. So anything short of that and Todd Bowles should return because which, what, what everybody needs to keep in mind is is what mostly everybody – Outside of what we talked about on this network, the possibility of this team being able to win five or six games and that being a logical number. Matter of fact, didn't you even say when we talked about high point, didn't you even put a number at five or six as a high point? Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, again you, you, again, you have to also revisit things when the season goes on. You have to look at where you, what you expect in the beginning of the year, and clearly that's a component of the expectations, but then – if you exceed those expectations and you've raised those expectations and then you so you got to blame the coach on that those expectations that have to be a factor you here. can't blame the coach you, on that no no i didn't i didn't wait, wait hold on i didn't blame the coach but also somebody has to take i wouldn't say the fall but the blame for the way they've started the last several weeks getting down 14 nothing last week why gets into game planning why 
What do you mean why? Why do we? Why do does mean? somebody have to take the blame? Why can't what it just be that well, they're okay, just not talented enough? Okay. What's your What's our excuse for the game against Tampa and our excuse for this week? I, they played two bad games this year. Two. Okay. That's it. Okay. I mean, I'm I'm willing I to agree. give them those. And two, they, also I, lost, they also they also lost double fourth quarter leads, and I'm not saying and that's, that that's talent. All his. I'm not saying it's all his fault. I'm just saying that I can tell you that as part of the equation for evaluation, all of this would be encompassed in that evaluation. Well, it should be, but it's not going to. It's not going to be enough at this point in the season to fire him. It will be, as I said, if it happens over the next three weeks. And then we go, well, there's like five of those games now. See, five. I can, I can, I can sit here and 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 and, and you know, uh, I, I could stick up for him and say, look, two games acceptable. Every team has bad weeks. Uh, it happens. It's the NFL. And when you have a bad week, when you don't have enough talent. You see what happens against Tampa Bay and Denver. So that's just that. So that's a, that, that's a snowball effect of a, ten, of, of a team that just isn't good enough. Uh, but if it happens more over the next few weeks, then yes, then we can revisit this conversation. And I can tell you whether or not I think it uh, I mean, whether my opinion matters or not. Of course, the ultimate decision is going to go to the Jets uh, brass, whoever's going to make that final call. Uh, I, look, I will say that one thing, though, I don't think there's any question that based on what we've seen, I don't care if Packenberg plays or not, or if he gets in and looks like an idiot, Mike McCagnan shouldn't be going anywhere. You know, Mike McCagnan has done a, a, a much – look, if there was some sort of star out there, like if Sean Payton said, I'm leaving New Orleans and I'm going to go somewhere and be a, a head coach and GM and I'm going to make all the decisions and the Jets wanted a clean house and get a guy like Sean Payton, hey, more power to you. But they aren't out there. And since they're not out there, I think Mike McCagan has clearly done a good enough job to be the general manager again next year, that if they get rid of balls, that they should give him the opportunity to hire his coach for the first time and then play that out for a couple of years and then reevaluate McCagan. But uh, Bowles would be the only guy that has a problem here, potentially. I don't think McCagan should be fired either. I grant it. He will take some of the heat for some of the draft picks that didn't pan out. Uh, I think... He will take a little bit of heat, especially for the Hackenberg one out of all of those draft picks because they wasted a high pick that most people did not have a high gray on. And granted, anytime you miss on a quarterback, especially early on in the draft, you're going to take the heat. If he had taken, like, put it this right, Bryce Petty, you and I both have the feeling that we wanted to see him in. If Bryce Petty falls on his face, it's a fourth round pick. Granted, not a seventh round pick that you've lost, but a fourth round pick that you, you quote unquote wasted much different perspective than taking a guy in the second round who nobody had a second round grade on. And you've missed so badly on that guy. That to me is one that's going to be in his uh, ledger much more on the negative side than one for Bryce Petty. If he doesn't do anything. And to me, I actually view losses against Tampa and Denver much worse than losses. If they get beat by the chargers, the Saints, and the Patriots. Now granted, if they get blown out these weeks and completely fall on their face and don't play hard, that's one thing. If they play hard and still get blown out because of the talent level, that's something else, and that's kind of reflected on the general manager. But to me, losing games like this against teams that most of us feel they should beat, regardless of the talent level, to me that's a bit more disconcerting than getting bombed against a team that you expect to bomb you. Well, that's, I think, only if you're a veteran team. When you're a young team, I'm not going to hold that against a head coach. Because there's only so much a head coach can do with a young team. That's that's learning to win in the NFL. It's learning that they are going to have to get up to these games. They can't just get up at home. They got to get up on the road. They can't just get up on the road and at home. They got to get up on the road uh, against bad teams. It's it's a process. And uh, look, if this was year one, we wouldn't really be saying anything. But it, because Bowles have been around for a few years, it's a little bit more for us to kind of nitpick it and say, look, that, 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 that. But we said this also in the beginning of the year. This, when, when McCagnan and Bowles were given this second chance, especially Bowles, it was like they were getting a second chance. It was like it was it was almost like they were starting anew because all the veterans were gone. They had cleaned house. Uh, and everything was kind of starting from fresh. It was almost like they came in and 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 as a group, and not just not just McCagnan and Bowles, but everybody in the organization that hey, this is the direction we're going to take the veterans from the Ryan era, and we're going to try to win, and we're going to keep forging ahead, and we're going to go out, we're going to spend some money. Uh, and when that failed, 
Uh, the organization basically gave McCagnan and Bowles a second shot. You know what? Didn't work. Let's now do it the right way. Let us rebuild slowly. And that's why, in a way, we do have to look at this as almost like a year one again. Like this is what this is what he's doing with a new young group, a new culture. And because these kids are so young and not all of them, many of them are not even going to be here next year, especially a lot of the uh, semi veteran guys uh, that uh, are just holding spots uh, for all the new faces that will be in this organization next year. Uh, once again, same thing with the GM. I just, unless you're going to tell me that there is a head coach out there, a Sean McVay out there, somebody that I'm excited about, which I can't see. I, I just, there's just no reason for, for me to get excited about wanting to get rid of bowls at this point in time, or even thinking about that because, you know, a couple of games and uh, why they should have beat the Bucks and they should have beat Denver and they played terrible. It's all his fault. Uh, no, I'm going to go. I'm not going down that path. I'm like, you know what? Just let's let's calm down and let's let's go out. Let's let's spend a little bit more money next year. Let's bring in some veteran talent. Let's get this guy a quarterback or at least a future quarterback in the draft. And let's go from there. Let's make sure that next season. Now, by the way, he shouldn't get more if he does come back more than another two year deal. You know, something where you can fire him next year if things aren't going well and you're not really wasting a whole lot of money. You give him a two year extension. If you, things aren't going well next year, then you get rid of them. But you do it at least where you, you want to see the progress after a five or six win season. You want to be able to see next season as, you know, maybe battling for a playoff spot. And at the very least, knowing that maybe you've got your franchise quarterback on the roster. He seems to be developing as a young kid, hopefully a draft pick. And then you're moving forward uh, uh, from there. No disagreement. I mean, I think we're all in agreement in terms of the one year versus two years. I, I think that's kind of the key because right now he's a lame duck guy. You don't want him to be another lame duck next year. Uh, they do need a quarterback, though you have to say that Josh McCown gave the Jets everything and probably even more they could have expected before the year started. So in terms of that, in terms of them needing a quarterback, yes, they need a franchise quarterback. But look at the work he did with Robbie Anderson. Look at the work he did with, with Curse, um, with main Curse. They, 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 got more than expected out of McCown, which is almost like you look at it, what you got out of Ryan Fitzpatrick two years ago before last year. There's there's holes that need to be filled. The offensive line clearly needs another guy. You definitely need guys in the defensive line. We've talked before about Mo Wilkerson having to be gone. To me, what's going to be problematic is if the Jets do, quote-unquote, collapse in three of the next kind of four games, especially given the opponents that they're facing, that could create a certain perception and image of Bowles because of the way the season's ended. Losing six of the last eight hasn't helped matters because it makes it look even worse for him in terms of the, you know, what could have happened with this team and whether or not they could have been in playoff contention regardless of how young they are. But then you start looking at the remainder of the schedule and you go, oh, wait, we got blown out against Saints potentially. Oh, wait, we got blown out against Chargers. Oh, wait, we got blown out against Patriots. Regardless of the quality of the competition that they're facing, when you package it all together, it's going to be very interesting what Chris Johnson views it as as to whether or not he gives Bowles another year because in another interesting twist that only seemingly this franchise has, the coach doesn't report to the GM. The coach and the GM each have their own individual reporting lines up to ownership, which is kind of an odd way of managing things. So we, we won't be able to know anything from McCagden because honestly, we won't even know McCagden's status until potentially the end of the season, which creates more uncertainty with a franchise that doesn't need any more uncertainty given what we've seen the last several years. Well, uh, let me ask you this question. If Josh McCown, if you knew that there was a possibility, and and, and look, there's little doubt that the Jets are going to go out there and they're going to use their pick, first-round pick, on a quarterback. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing people already writing about, oh, the Jets have to move up and get Sam Darnold or Josh Rosen. Look, this is what we've been talking about with Baker Mayfield for the last couple of months. This is this is the whole reason why uh, I mentioned Baker Mayfield as much, because you don't have to move up and you don't want to do that anyway, especially because, look, keep this in mind. We've said this since the beginning of the season. The Jets are not going to be able to outbuild the, the Buffalo Bills for their quarterback services. The Bills have way too much ammunition. 
Why do you think they made all those deals in the offseason and in the beginning of the season? They did it because they understood what they were, what was going to happen with the quarterback position. They knew that they were going to have to strike a deal with, say, maybe the team like uh, – well, Cleveland, you know, is going to go after a quarterback. There's no question about that. They can't not. Uh, but at some point, maybe let's see. Who knows? The Niners are now screwing themselves with wins. But let's say the Niners are sitting there and they and, – and, and they can – and and they could and, and and Darnold say or Rosen are still on the board. Well, the Niners are going to trade that pick. Well, the Buffalo Bills are going to sit there and they are going to be able to give San Francisco a lot more than the Jets could. So Cleveland is going to sit at one. They're going to get their quarterback. So whoever that second team is, if they don't need a quarterback, the Bills will outbid the Jets. So let's just keep that in mind. That gets rid of Rosen. That gets rid of Darnold. That leaves the Jets in a situation where you you're going to you don't have to move anywhere because there's just no no way that I can conceive Baker Mayfield is going to is going to wind up as a top 10 pick if the Jets are sitting there at 11, which is where they are right now. I just can't conceive it. I, I know the NFL. If anything, Josh Allen would still go ahead. And, 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 and so I, so I don't think any of that nonsense even applies. And because of that, I think that you, so so the question I'm going to ask you is, is, is if the Jets do go out and let's say they draft Baker Mayfield and they're sitting there. And and he's the quarterback of the future. Would you want Josh McCown back knowing a, there's a possibility that if Todd Bowles is the coach, that there's a possibility that he would start Josh McCown week one and that if he played like he played this year, he would be the starting quarterback all year? So let me take a couple of things. First of all, Pete on the 49ers quote unquote screwing themselves over. Right now, to me, what I think is the court of 49ers have now gotten themselves their franchise quarterback. Look at the difference that Jimmy Garoppolo has made with that team. And granted, they're, they, I'm sure they would love to still have that higher draft pick to get more in a deal. But they have won, I think, three in a row now with Garoppolo. No, I, no they're so screwing themselves of- over on accident, which I am laughing in their faces over. Because they wanted to tank the season. Because we all knew Garoppolo should have been playing weeks ago. They were a tank team left and right. And when as soon as uh, the, the Bethard went down, they had to play Gar- Garoppolo. So I love it that they're losing that their draft status. We all know they've got their franchise quarterback. They knew they had their franchise quarterback. So I just love the fact they're getting screwed. All right. Look, as somebody who also roots for the Niners a little bit, as you know, just given my love for Montana as a Notre Dame guy, I, I was happy with them getting Garoppolo. What that does for them, it gives them a franchise quarterback. The reason why I was pointing that out is you, we've talked a lot about needing a franchise quarterback, and, and McCown has played great, um, giving the Jets a chance to win games. He wasn't their franchise quarterback solely because of his age, because of, I think he's 38 now. He wasn't going to be their quarterback, but... The Niners now getting their franchise quarterback shows you just the difference that that guy makes for an organization as a whole, for a team that had been a laughing stock during before the season and during the season. Now, you take a step back and you also you take stock of what your team is and you say, okay, here's the needs that we have. And we've enumerated them fairly clearly, quarterback being one of them. Now you go into the draft and go, okay, here's the guy we want. Who do we think other teams are going to take? As you said, number one, the Browns are going to take a quarterback. Number two, it could end up being the New York Giants this year, and the Giants are very likely to get a quarterback sure. in the draft. Sure. Which now means it all depends on does Darnold, does Darnold come out? Rosen, where does Allen go? Does Baker Mayfield move up the ladder? Mike Maycock had a thing on Mayfield. What on, on Mayfield? If you don't even if you don't like Maycock, you know they had asked him and said, "Hey, what's your view on Maycock?" I think it was Joe and Evan on on one of their podcast, one of their interviews, and he said, "Look." I haven't looked at him a lot. I've looked at a lot more. He's really impressed me the more I've looked at him. And you and I both had the same view on him. So the concern that you and I both have to have is say, huh, does he move up so much up the ladder that he surpasses others and now the Jets can't get him unless they lose several games in a row? And that's something where the next several games kind of makes that decision for you as to what, what this team ends up becoming as to where you go as an organization moving forward. Are you are you a franchise that wants to lose moving forward? And given what we saw at a Petty yesterday, it was not impressive. Um, and if you're going to play Hackenberg, you're likely going to lose. And where does it say you only end up with five wins? Where does that leave you in terms of draft placement compared to others who need a quarterback who are ahead of you or even those who are behind you with a 
same or similar record, but are a pick or two behind you, but have a lot more assets to deal, which is you said when you're talking about Buffalo. All those draft picks they acquired now makes it even easier and more attractive for them to deal with a team like the 49ers if they finish with fewer wins than the Jets have. All right. So, again, my question. Would you want McCown back if Baker Mayfield or a Josh Allen were on this team knowing if Todd Bowles would start McCown week one and that if he played as good as he played this season, he would play all season? I will say he probably starts the year. No, no, I'm not saying season. that. I'm asking you. The whole season? Would you want McCown? Wh- no, way. It, no. it depends on where your season has gone. No, I'm not saying that. I'm giving you a hypothetical of would you take the chance? Because this is exactly what it would be if you just finding you because you're just let's just say and we'll be able to talk about this, you know, after the draft or during free agency, you know, because they're probably going to wait until after after the draft before they make any decisions on guys like Josh McCown. So let's say that they are in the draft. They get they get Mayfield. Now you hear the news. OK, uh, after the draft that the Jets have, have acquired Josh McCown. Are you happy or not? knowing the possibility that he could start week one and play the whole year as he did this year. That's all I'm asking. I'm not asking you to to tell me how things might go during the season. Just knowing when you first instance, you hear the news that he is signed by the Jets. Are you happy? Generically, am I happy? No. Are you happy knowing that Todd Bowles could start him all season? Are you happy with that possibility? Because that's exactly what's going to happen. I'm telling you right now, I'm warning you. If McCown is signed by the Jets and they have Baker Mayfield on this roster, there is a distinct possibility McCown will start week one and play all year. Are you willing to take that chance as a fan and being happy with it? I'm willing to take the chance. I'm willing to be relatively happy with it, depending on what happens with the season next year. Okay, so if it's another like season like this, because that's what it would be. I mean, if it's if they're if six and six, like this, you know, if they're six then, and six after you... twelve games, they're not going to be better than that. Let's say they're six and six after twelve games, and McCowns are starting quarterback. You're happy with that? With Mayfield sitting on the bench, I would be happy with Mayfield learning his first year. Okay, that's that's fair. That's all I want to know. Now, I wouldn't be. I would, uh, but keep in mind, I would love to have McCown back on this team as a backup. And I would even be fine with McCown starting the first few games. Uh, but, you know, I, I would be terrified uh, to have a guy like Mayfield sitting on the bench. I just, I don't want to do that anymore. I mean, I've seen too many young quarterbacks recently that uh, that are going out there and playing and, and being successful. A lot of them aren't. A lot of them are. Um, and, and then, look, some of them aren't even going to be very successful the first season. But look at guys like Goff. You know, look at guys uh, that are out there that could, yeah, all right, they're not looking all that great. They play a little bit. Uh, all right, maybe they play five games or ten games or the whole season. Uh, but then next year, they really take off. Uh, I, I just would rather speed that process up and get them on the field. Uh, and if it if it means, you know, I'd rather do that and go 4-12 and 12 with, 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 say, a guy like Mayfield than go 8-8 eight and eight, uh, with McCown and be, okay, Mayfield in 2019. And then that means we don't really even start winning into 2020. So that's, that's, that's just me. But I, I see where you're coming from. So, but that's, I don't know. I, you know, look, a lot's going to depend on whether McCann wants to come back. I mean, who knows if he, if he wants to retire or not. I don't know if he would retire. I know he's probably getting really tired of the injuries, though. I mean, that's got to wear on you. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, uh, I think I think the good thing is, again, I don't think this is a decision that the, the, the Jets organization has to make until after the draft. And then they could decide what to do at that point. And then also take a look at these next three weeks. And hopefully Petty can actually look like a backup. One can only hope. Granted, look, maybe he didn't have a lot of reps, but he he did not look particularly good yesterday after McCown went out. No, I'm not. Uh, I'm not going to stick up for any of the things that he might have done. But look, the whole team was terrible, and you do this with these. That's why I'm. I'm willing to be patient with him because he, look, he's going to get his chance now, 
It's not like McCown. But it's not like the Fitzpatrick thing, where you know he's sitting on the bench. He's going to start, and then if he doesn't do good, you know he'll come out. No, it's it's I, I'm there's no no reason to rush this now that I'm willing to at least stick up for him for one game and say, well, the team was terrible. Everybody was playing bad. You know, he came into a situation where Denver was just going to rush the quarterback. Uh, so it was it was not a good situation. Was did, did he were his passes off? Yeah, there were. Is that expected? Yeah, it was. Um, so I'm willing to give him one week and then we'll see. But I'm not giving him much more than that. You know, it's time for him to step up. It's time for him also, as we talked about at the beginning of the season, no more getting injured. I don't care how freakish the injury is. Stay on the field. Play the game. Don't get hurt. Uh, you get hurt one more time and I'm done with you. So stay on the field. Play the next three weeks. You know, because if he doesn't play, I'd say, well, I tell you what, if he doesn't play well for a couple of weeks, if it's pretty obvious that, you know what, it's not happening. He's not. He's he's way he's erratic. Uh, you know, all the reps in the world aren't going to cure this. He doesn't have the it factor. Uh, then I, I think we would need to see Hackenberg uh, by week 17. At least I would hope so. I would like to see Hackenberg at least get a game. But like I said, my fear is that if he he's horrific which I think a lot of us think he might be, um, that reflects very poorly on McCagnan. And is McCagnan going to want to take that chance of, of getting the viewpoint of him taking another hit before he's evaluated by the powers that being granted? That shouldn't decide whether or not he's back or not next year or the week, but um, that he doesn't that have a choice. He considered he's on the roster. Factor. I mean, he's on the roster. I mean, if he really thought yeah, of it, you can, can play petty. No, but I mean, he in a way he doesn't really have a choice, McCagnan. Sooner or later, whether he cuts him without anybody ever seeing him play, or he plays and plays poorly, he'll be he'll be evaluated as as that was just a bad decision. Which, by the way, every really top notch general manager makes dumb decisions like that, every one of them. So another reason why I'm willing to just, to me, I don't care about that. It doesn't matter. You know, every one of them make bad decisions. He made a bad one. At least at this point, it looks like he made a bad one. So I'm, I'm willing to forgive him for one bad move. So I'm, I'm okay with that. I mean, I, don't, I personally don't think that's going to work against him. Now, of course, in New York, I understand how New York treats it. I get it. I know how they are. I mean, I hear it on the radio. I see it in the newspaper. I know they deal with these kind of things a lot crazier. They go too intense on this kind of stuff that the real people making decisions don't care about. I just don't think that that's going to matter. What's going to matter is is everything else, all the other moves, which, you know, I mean, and, and really, if you look at it, I mean, what is the only other move that, that, that has backfired? It's probably been, what, Devin Smith, and that's been an injury, right? So... I mean, what other moves do, do you not like that he's uh, that he's made? Anything else that you're critical of that you think he's he's completely missed on? Well, I think the Wilkerson extension doesn't look particularly good. Well, the good thing is is that at least he, at least there's an out next year, so there's that. At least he's not tied to the contract after this year, so that's a good thing. I mean, I, I would say that that and, and and all the other deals that he made too. At least most of them that he was able to let those guys go and it not hurt the cap. Of course, Forte is still here, and um, who else was still here? Forte and Re and uh, Screen. And I think Forte is going to be gone also after this year. I, I can't foresee him being back. That's true. Yeah, there's no reason for Forte to be back. Forte will want to go anywhere. So if he's going to play again, he'll want to go somewhere where we can play with a, a team that can win. Uh, so yeah, I agree. And uh, so yeah, I mean that's why this is such going to this going to be such an, a fun. Uh, and informative, uh, and 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 really, I mean, this is it. This is the big off season for us. We, we this is this is the biggest off season we've had in a long time, uh, and I'm looking forward to it. And uh, let's see how the team ends the season. Uh, we'll see how Petty goes. Uh, big game with the Saints this week. With the Saints needing this game big time, no reason at all to expect that the Jets are going to be uh, able to win this football game. With the Saints coming off a loss, and as good as they're playing, and it uh, looks like Kamara is going to be able to play next week, so that's going to be a disaster for the Jets as well. Uh, but let's just hope that uh, they don't look like anything like we saw on Sunday, because again, if they do, 
then uh, then we will start talking next week about uh, Todd Bowles uh, needing some big performances in the final two games or else he will be in trouble. And I'm hoping we don't come to that. I'm one of those who still believes that Bowles could be the coach. You hear the way the players talk about him, and I don't think they've checked out. I don't think yesterday was a case of them not playing hard. I think it was a case of them not playing well, and granted, part of that may have to be on the coach despite the, the talent level. And, and yesterday's a game where we thought Talent-wise, they matched up or exceeded Denver. The next couple of weeks are ones where we don't think they match up and definitely don't exceed the, the opponents that they're facing. So those kind of losses are ones that wouldn't, wouldn't kind of shock us. It's the ones where we think they should win regardless of how young they are and regardless of the construction of the team. That creates a bit of a, a, a issue for me in terms of the performance. So that's kind of my view on this. But I do still believe that McCagan deserves to be back at least for another year, maybe two. Um, in my opinion also um, that Bowles at least deserves another year so we'll kind of see what happens with that one and go from there is it Curly supposed to be back now isn't he supposed to be activated Curly's four game suspension should be should be should be up all right well look I I, I hope that they do not uh, if, if they activate him uh, this week or whenever they do I certainly hope now that the season is over as far as the playoffs are concerned, that they do not take away reps from Hanson. Uh, it is time. Uh, that's all. You know, look, Petty's coming in. Now let's start to get Hanson in. We'll start to get Stewart in. Let's start to play some of these kids uh, that are going to need to get evaluated in regular season games, especially against the top teams that the Jets are playing. And even though it's a scary thought to know that, that like Bryce Petty is going to have to play against all these good teams, and, and the Jets are going to have to play all against all these good teams the way that they played last, uh, yesterday. Uh, it's actually a good thing. It, it's good. It's good for the fans because at least we get to see the Jets play meaningful games, not necessarily for them, but for the opponents they're playing, uh, which means that the Jets are going to have to play their best football. And, 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 and the talented kids, the ones that are growing up, the future leaders of this team, uh, are going to have to play their best football, and we'll get an opportunity to see how they match up against teams playing at their best or trying to play at their best. So, so this is a good experience for this young team over the next three weeks, and and uh, you know I'm hoping uh, for the best. I you know we get our chance to see Petty. Well, well, this is it. You know I know some people are saying ah oh, this shouldn't just all be about uh you know just just three games and maybe he he would need even more time after this and i don't care what petty thinks himself i think you i don't know if you would agree but this is it this is his chance i, I don't know if he's ever going to get another chance again it would have to be an injury let's just put it that way for him to get in there uh but i don't even know if he's going to get a chance with a real team as a backup number two guy so this is it if he plays three games he better prove it and that includes me. I'm going to be hard on his ass in evaluation. No more excuses. Go out and get it done. He's got enough talent to get it done. We've seen McCown get it done with this talent. We now need to see Petty get it done. And I certainly hope he does it. I'll be rooting for him. No, I agree. I mean, I'd like to see Petty show something at a minimum that, that extends his, his shelf life in the NFL. It gives the Jets something to think about as a potential backup, depending on what happens with McCown. Um, but you know, we'll see, we'll see what happens from there. So I'm hoping that he plays well enough to show that he deserves a spot. I don't think he's the future. Neither you nor I thought that beginning of the year, but we thought he deserved an opportunity to play. Now he's getting that opportunity. All right, Jan, appreciate your time. As always, uh, enjoy the game uh, and as best we can. Uh, hopefully it's a good one. Can't be any worse than the one we saw yesterday. Uh, and uh, we'll talk to you again next Monday. Sounds yeah, good. All right, thanks, Jan. All right, that's Jan Levine, rotowire.com, and that is going to wrap it up here uh, for another edition of Jets Uncovered on the Our Lads Football Radio Network. Uh, stay with us the rest of the week. Uh, we are going to have uh, a lot of bowl coverage with the bowl games starting on Saturday. So we'll have our bowl preview on Friday. We'll have more NFL talk on Thursday with Tony Mejia previewing week 15 in the NFL. Uh, we'll update all the futures, of course, this week uh, for the NFL for the Super Bowl. Uh, as well as, of course, the playoff picture. So uh, that's coming up this week on the R-Lads Football Radio Network. Uh, for Jan Levine, I'm Greg DePama. Thanks for listening to Jets Uncovered. We'll see you next time.